Hey there Dev Squad, Veritas here and in today's video, we're going to be giving you an introduction to C++ and how it works as a programming language and giving you a foundation as to how it's all going to run, getting you set up with the ability to understand some basic subjects such as syntax, header files and functions, getting you ready to write some C++ code. Without further ado, let's go ahead and dive into the video. Okay, so now we're inside of Visual Studio, we can actually take a look at how C++ works as a programming language. So C++ in itself is a high level programming language, which essentially just means it's very much human like, in the sense that it's going to have a lot of English words and something that we can very easily write into the computer. For the computer to be able to read this, it needs to be in the form of binary, which is ones and zeros and is the lowest level programming language that you can get. So for us to have our code that looks like this, you need to run it through something called a compiler. A compiler is essentially going to take all of that information where it's translated the code that we've got into the ones and zeros and it's going to turn it into a executable file. In the case of video game development, that is going to be an executable game or the same with software, you're going to have an executable software file. And all of this conversion is going to be done inside of the compiler. And we're going to see this being put into practical use as we go through this course, as we run our code through the compiler and turn it into something visual that we can actually see. Without the compiler, essentially all we've got is code and there is not much that we can do it. The compiler is going to take those instructions and turn it into something that the user can use. You don't actually need to know binary for C++. The reason why I mentioned it is because it is good to actually know how the code that you have is going to be converted, how it's going to be stored and all of that good stuff. We'll be taking a little bit of a look at it throughout this course, but we're not going to need to be fluent in binary as the software Visual Studio is going to do all of the conversion for us. So all we need to do is just simply write this very much human-like English programming language that we've got here. Now, when it actually comes to converting the code that we've got and turning it into something that you can use, you need to have a target platform so your compiler knows how to output your application. In this example that we're going to be doing throughout this course, we are going to essentially be creating a console application, and this is going to be either 64-bit or 32-bit. So having said that, we need to tell Visual Studio as a compiler what our target platform is, and we can do that up here. If we go to our solution platform, what we've got here is x64, which is our 64-bit, and then underneath that we have also got our x86, which which is going to be our 32-bit operating systems. Now, if you're familiar with your computer and if it's something modern, generally you are gonna have a 64-bit processor. Now, having said that, if you're working with software or video games, you are going to have different platforms, especially in video games. You might have an Xbox One, you might have a PlayStation, and that is going to be an example of a solution platform. Like I said, throughout this course, however, we're going to be learning the fundamentals of C++, programming inside of a console application, so we're simply just going to have a time 64-bit configuration. You can also go into your configuration manager and you can change some of the settings that we've got here related to the solution platform. In addition to that, we have also got our solution configuration. The solution configuration is essentially just a set of rules as to how this application or our code should be going through our compiler. Some of the examples that we've got here is our debug mode, which is going to give you access to a whole variety of different debugging features. And then you've also got your release, which is going to get rid of those features. It's just going to be the application and that is it. The configuration, like I said, is essentially just a set of rules saying how it should go through that compiler. 
you can go into your configuration manager and you can go ahead and change some of these settings. We'll be taking a look at this as we go throughout the course teaching C++. Now, one thing that I do want to mention is throughout this course, we are going to be using the debug mode as we are going to be using it to see how our code is actually running, the flow, and you're going to see all of this as we start to use the debugging functionality in a later video in this course. But for now though, what we're going to do is move on to a code breakdown showing you how the code in C++ is actually going to run. So taking a look at our code here, what we're going to be doing is trying to break this down into some very easy segments with the code that we've got here. We're going to be looking at the flow, the order in which it's going to be run, and then we're also going to give you a rough understanding of what some of this code is and what it does. So I'm going to start off from the very top, which is hashtag include IO stream. This is a preprocessor directive statement. This is essentially just code which is going to be run before anything else. So if it has this little hashtag here, that simply says it is going to be run before any other code, regardless of the line number here. Generally, however, you are going to put this at the top and you are not going to include this as part of your main function. Now, for those of you that are wondering what this whole hashtag include IO stream is, this is essentially including a header file. A header file is essentially just a common place for storing function declarations. A function declaration is essentially just saying a function exists. And by having this included into this file, we are going to be able to access a function, which is just a piece of code or a sequence of code inside another CPP file. So it could be in another code document and we can use it in this one by simply including that header file in there. We're going to be taking a deeper look at header files and their use as we go further into the course. So make sure you stay tuned for that. Moving on from here, we have got our main function, which you can see here. The main function is going to be the code that is going to be run for your application, and it is going to do this line by line. Anything inside of this will be run. Now, when it comes to this function, you can see the beginning and the end of it by taking a look at the two brackets at the start and the end. Within these brackets, you're also going to have your text or your code rather, which is telling it what that function is going to do. In this case, you can see here, we have got some text which simply says STD see out hello world. And what that means is, is essentially telling the console application to print onto the screen, hello world. And it's going to do this because it is part of that main function. Any code in that main function is going to be run line by line. And you can see here, we've got the line numbers six, seven, eight, nine, and it is going to run it all in that order in our main function. Now, what I do want to mention is within that main function, you can also use loops and other things to change the flow of how your code is going to be run. But preliminary, that is just what you want to think about for now. We'll be taking a further look at all of that stuff as we go through this course. Now, I know and I understand that I'm saying that about a lot of things. Don't worry about it. I just don't want to overcomplicate things. I just want to give you a very basic understanding of some of the code that we've got here. So what we're going to do to show you that our code is going to be run from our main function, what we're going to do is take this line of text that we've got here, STDC out, we are going to copy this. And then after this, we are simply going to add a new line and we're going to paste it in there. And what we're going to do with this second line of text, all we're going to do is change hello world question mark to this is a Virtus course, just like that. And if we were to go ahead and run this through the local Windows debugger, you are actually going to see it is going to print both pieces of that text onto the screen there, as you can see. And what we have done there is essentially just written our very first piece of C++ code. Now, meanwhile, you might not know what STD and C out is. We will be getting into it, but the use or the practical use is going to be exactly the same. We are just writing code within functions. Moving on to the next piece of code that we've got inside of our C++ document here, we have got the green text. 
This green text serves a very important role. This is a comment. A comment is not going to affect how your code runs and is simply just a note. So if it has got these two slashes before it, it is just a note and it is not going to be run on the application. And this is really handy if you're working in a team and you haven't written the code yourself. What you can do is add a note. Instead of reading through hundreds of lines of code, what they can do is just read the one line comment instead Instead, and they will have an understanding of exactly what it is doing and its use. Also, if it's been a long time since you've run your application, say six months since the start of your project, you might not remember everything, so put the notes in there and it is going to help you out big time. So what we're going to do is actually write our own comments here. So what we're going to do just above our main function here, integer, main, and then all of that good stuff. We're going to go above that. We're going to add a new line by pressing enter. And then all we're going to do is add the two slashes like I have just done there. And we're just going to say, this is our main function. And that is it. We have now added in a comment. And if we were to run this through the debugger, you can see that is not being displayed on the screen. It's not going to change the way that our code actually works. So hopefully that gives you a basic understanding of how comments and functions and preprocessor statements work. Don't worry if you're not 100% sure on these just yet, as we are going to be covering these in a lot of detail as we go throughout this course. This video is just a basic introduction. What we're going to do now is we're actually going to move on to the next section, which is syntax. Syntax is essentially just language. In English, you have certain things that you expect, like full stops to say you are finished with a sentence. In the same way with C++, you are going to have your semicolon to tell the compiler that this is the end of this line of code or this statement rather. And there is lots of little things like this that you can expect. And as you go throughout this course and you get deeper into C++, just like learning any other language, you are going to have this becoming second nature. It's just going to be natural. What I'm going to do is break down some of this basic syntax that we've got here to give you a better understanding of how all of this works. Starting off from the very top, our header files, if we're trying to include something, if it's a preprocessor statement, you are going to have your hashtag. And that is just going to tell the compiler what you're trying to do with that code. Moving on from there, we have got our two slashes. That is your comment. If it sees this, it is going to know that this does not need to be run through the compiler. It is just notes. And that is exactly what this syntax is. It's just helping out in terms of ruling, telling the compiler exactly what should happen. Moving on from there, we have then got our function. Our function is contained within these brackets. So that way the compiler knows the start of the function and the end of the function. And then moving on from there inside of this function, we've actually got a little bit of code. And this is a statement which is just telling the compiler to print onto the screen. And at the end of this, we have got a semicolon. This is the end of the statement. And after every line of code that is a statement like this, you need to have that semicolon in there. Anyway, guys, that is some basic syntax and a basic breakdown into how C++ actually works. Get ready for the next few videos where we're going to be going deeper into all of this and writing some proper code. But for now, you should have a solid foundation. Move on to the next video. Once again, guys, thanks for watching. Stay awesome. Keep creating. This video was made possible by my supporters on Patreon. If you want more videos like this, check out my Patreon page using the link in the description. To stay up to date on new releases, make sure you follow us on social media.